Do you know that Paul says of himself that he, Paul, is a minister of the new covenant? That settles that question. We're living in new covenant times. Yes, that new covenant is going to be ratified again in the future by now blinded Israel, the national Jew, if you like. But if you're not in the new covenant, you aren't a Christian. Paul is a minister of the new covenant. That's in 2 Corinthians 3. The old covenant has gone. Now, Jesus speaks of fulfilling the law. What does that mean exactly? It doesn't mean that he follows the law in the letter in every respect. Let me give you two examples. In Mark 9, 17, we have a comment there. Thus Jesus said, cleansing all foods. That's not copying Leviticus 11. It's fulfilling it. It's bringing it to what it really meant ultimately. Take another example in Matthew 19 where he's talking about divorce, not separation. Very important distinction. The people ask him, can you have a divorce for any and every reason? And he says, let me tell you what happened here. Moses, that's the law of Moses, was given to you for the hardness of your hearts. But from the beginning in Genesis, which is also part of the law, by the way, Genesis, it was not so. And so he changes the exceptions found in Moses, goes back behind that to Genesis. So Jesus is doing various things with the Torah, but all of it is in some spiritual sense a fulfillment, of course. Now we know that it was only when we get to Paul that some of the more radical fulfillments are explored. Jesus doesn't say anything about doing away with physical circumcision, as far as I know, but Paul certainly does. And he quotes you Paul in Galatians. He says, if anybody wants to get circumcised physically, he will be obliged to keep the whole law. Don't do it. So define in your mind then, what is this whole law which you shouldn't be trying to keep? This will solve a lot of problems. So I hope that deals with it. Yes, Jesus came to fulfill the law, but in Ephesians we find that he also abolished the law of uh, the Torah of commandments and ordinances. So there's some portion of the law which is actually done away, completely abolished. There are other parts of it which are fulfilled, brought to a higher standard, the law of adultery, for example. All of this has to be discerned point by point. So I hope that deals with that question. But we absolutely are living in the new covenant. And if you think you aren't, you're simply in a state of unbelief because Paul is a minister of the new covenant. That's quite clear.